One thing about the original Pac-Man was that he always looked in the same direction as that that he moved. So if he was moving to the right, he was looking to the right. If he was moving up, he was looking up. If he was moving down, he was looking down. But if you want to look at that as a limitation, maybe it's because Pac-Man was released in 1980, which was before I was even born. And computers are so much powerful these days, surely we can have a character be looking in one direction and moving in another, or side strafing, as it were. And uh, we're gonna see how we can accomplish that side strafing. Because here's Pac-Man and he's being beset on by ghosts like Inky. And he wants to move down to get away from the ghost, but he also wants to keep an eye on the ghost. And that means facing the ghost, even as he's moving down. So here's his direction of motion. Here's his velocity vector. We're just going to call that V. And we're not going to talk about it again, because it no longer matters. What we're really interested in is the vector that Pac-Man is looking along. And that is a vector from P to I. So let's go to blue. And we'll draw this vector out. Mm -hmm. So he's looking to the right even as he's moving down. And this will be a vector from P to I. Quick recap, you can calculate PI quite easily. It is just I minus yellow P. I minus P. Remember, the destination comes first and then the uh, the source of the vector. So to make a vector from P to I, you take I you subtract P. Now, ideally when we store vectors that represent where a character is looking, because there's no reason we can't use a vector for that. Uh, in fact, it's a great thing to use vectors for where a character is looking instead of just where they're going. But if we use a vector to store where a character is looking, it's got to be a little bit different. It's got to be a unit length vector, meaning its magnitude, its length, is always one. It can face anywhere it wants to, but its magnitude is going to be one all of the time. And so, we have to calculate a unit length vector out of pi, and it's really easy to do. So we're going to denote this unit length vector by saying pi hat. This little carrot symbol on top, it's like a hat. Think of it as a hat, and it means that pi has a length of 1. And we can calculate pi very easily by taking the pi vector, the full length vector, and dividing it by the length of itself. So if pi has a length of 5, then you divide it by 5 to get the normal length vector. And when you do this, you will always get a vector whose length is exactly 1. And we can use that to store the direction that Pac-Man is looking in. Let's break that up and see how it looks in XY notation. pi hat equals that is the x component of pi divided by the length of pi. And then for the y component, you're going to have the same thing. The y component of pi divided by the length of pi. And that's it. Now we have our unit length vector. And before I go to the code, I want to lecture you how, on how useful, how freaking useful normal length vectors are. Also called unit length vectors or normalized vectors. They're used everywhere in game development. And knowing how to make them and create them can help you a great deal. If you've ever heard of normal maps, they use normal length vectors all over the place. They're used for where characters are looking, where characters are going, doing math for character movement. They're not just used for where a character is looking. So it's very important to know them and learn them. And now we'll go to the code and see how they're implemented. And bam, now we are at the code and we're going to see how they're implemented. So I've added a new normalization function here. It's called normalized. It does not edit. It does not change 
the vector that you call it on, but instead it returns a new vector, which is normalized. And we're going to implement that function. Here it is. This is actually one of the easiest functions we've had to implement yet. Uh, there's the equation right on the right. I'm going to create a new vector that we're going to uh, that we're, that's going to hold our normalized value. We're going to set its value. Now I'm going to use something you may not have seen before. All this means, <laughs> that was a double entendre, all this means is we're referring to the vector object that we're going to normalize. It's not normal length and we're going to make it normal length. And then I'm going to divide it by uh, the length function that we wrote in I think our third video. And this division right here is that division operator overload that we wrote in our previous video. And that's it. So we take our vector and we divide it by the length which is exactly our formula here on the right. So normalized. We return it because we're done. So let's go down to, wow there's a lot of functions we've written. Our main function. Uh, I've created a point where Pac-Man is and a point where Inky is. And I'm going to get a vector from Pac-Man to Inky by taking i minus p. And actually, I think in the video I made this uh, pi. So I'm going to make that pi here too, pi. And so then we take pi and we normalize it and we store that in this normalized vector here. And then we print out the normalized x and the x and y of the normalized vector, so we can see what those values are, and the total length of this vector. And so let's see if I messed up. Nope, looks good to me. So Pac-Man's view vector is 0.707.707. .707. That means he's looking up and to the right because these are both positive numbers. And 0.707, if you're sharp, you'll recognize as square root of 2 divided by 2. And I'll leave it as an exercise to you to figure out why that is an important number that you're going to see a lot in game development. Do the math by hand. The math here. Um, take these two points and do the math by hand and you'll see how you get this number. It's a very common number and you should become familiar with it. And then when we print out the length, we see that a vector with x 0.707107 and y 0.707107, the length of that vector is amazingly 1. So now we have a way of, sh of showing, of storing where Pac-Man is looking. And because we can do this math however we want, we can make him look wherever we want. And that is pretty cool. So for the next video, uh, you know what, I haven't even planned the next video yet. I just made six of these videos in a row and you know, I wanna go to bed. So I'll plan the rest of the videos later. I hope you've had fun and I'll see you next time.